Okay, just trying to catch up here, show you what I did. I have all the electrolytics installed, observant polarity of course, and I have the uh, RFI suppression chokes installed here. They're all the same, uh, the same values. Got the voltage regulator in with a heat sink, and they didn't supply any heat sink uh, compound. I don't know why, maybe because it's too messy. So they uh, they just had the heat sink on there. So I have that installed. And the one tricky thing is the uh, LED. You have to use the um, the diagram here, and it's made uh, to scale. And then the LED goes in, so it's off the board. It sits up the off the board uh, 0.43 inches. So for a sanity check, which they don't tell you to do, but I figured I'd do it anyway. It's like an IQ test. You take yourself the front panel, and what you do is you. Um, here it is over here. This this one's the front panel here. Take the front panel and you just put it over. See, make sure the LED lines up and all the uh, controls line up to the holes. Like you want to do this before you assemble the thing and find out that you have the LED installed wrong. And see, I didn't cut the leads yet on the LED either. So this is what you want to do first. So this is just a handy little tip I'm throwing in, kids. So, um, making good progress, so talk to you later. Bye. Okay, now I'm inspecting all the solder connections before I um, insert the integrated circuits. I'm just making sure that all, the, all of them look nice and bright, nice and rounded. No cold solder joints, nothing like crystal, crystallized looking. You know, they're all looking pretty good, but this is a good, important step, and it's very important. See, look at that. I missed, I missed one. I missed a connection right, right there. Now, I did clean the board a little bit with, um, I had some nail polish remover, but, you know, that could have been a little strong. It didn't hurt the board at all. I was just going to say that, uh, I think de denatured alcohol would work too. That's like not as strong as a uh, nail polish remover. And you just get like a brush and you can get the flux off. If you want, you don't have to. You don't have to do that. I don't think the flux is going to hurt um, anything really if you left it on. The um, I just did it because I want to inspect all the solder connections to make sure they look nice and, and bright and all that. And I could clean this board a little bit more. There's some residue of the uh, the flux on this green on the green portion here, but uh, all the connections look good except for that one that I miss. So I'm just gonna do that. It's it's good to inspect it before like you go further, because uh, you don't want to troubleshoot a problem later after you install this and put it all together. So that's what you want to do, and then next step is the ICs. Okay, so I I soldered two joints. I had missed two solder joints, and I didn't see that unless I cleaned the board. And there was two joints that I touched up. I resoldered two other joints. So there was four solder joints that I um, that I redid. Now it's time to insert the ICs because the board's like totally dry. I just wanted to like, uh, make it clear that I just cleaned the bottom of the board and it seemed like denatured alcohol seemed to like also be good. Just lightly brush it, but you don't have to do that. You know, I just did it because I wanted to inspect all the joints really good. But you know, you don't have to. It doesn't say to do that in the instructions. So I don't think the flux is going to hurt anything if you left it on. Okay guys and gals, it's time to put the ICs in. And as promised, I got static strap on and uh, it's pretty humid in the garage and they had a funny thing they said here they said um, avoid shuffling your feet or sliding around on a chair while handling the ICs well now I was just planning to like do the shuffle off the buffalo 
And I'm glad I read that because uh, I'm definitely not going to shuffle my feet now. But we do have the, uh, the strap on. And then we're going to take the IC carefully out here. We're going to see what, what it says here. Using my magnifying glass, it says it's a 74HC 460N. 74 series 460HC. Wait a minute. HC 460. And we got two of them that are 74HC. No, that's, never mind. That's a 40, they have a 4046 in there. Okay, this is definitely a 74 HC 4060. So to, to put this in, you actually got to, the pins, they, they actually spread the pins out a little bit. And I think that's for the automatic uh, insertion again. But you have to actually bend the pins down a little bit. You have to bend them down so you put them on a flat surface and you just kind of rock it rock it in a little bit this one here make sure they're all straight too this one's a little this one's a little off. Okay. Okay, that was the 4060. And they want that one to go into the U2 portion. So we'll stick that in U2. And when you put them in, you have to put them in so the little, the little indentation, or the little dot, is where the dot lines up on the dot on the socket. So here's, here's U2 here. And, of course, you want to make sure all the pins are straight. You don't want to force them. It's a little tricky. Let's get one side there. Check the other side. And make sure that you can see this, too. Let's see. Put it in here. Let's try this side first. No, you know, I gotta bend them in a little bit more. It's one of those things you don't want to rush. You don't want to break a pin or bend it and be a pain in the butt. So the 460 is definitely U2. I'll double check that. Get it in there. And I'm just showing this one. I don't want to show all these here. Because that would be time consuming. Can he do it? Nope. That little bugger does not want to go in. Looks like they're lined up okay there and there. There it goes. There it goes. Got it in. So it's totally in and it's totally flush into the socket. And that's what we want. Now to do it a couple more times.